Clark. Today, um, I want to address a friend's question. He asked if I would speak about uh, mental wandering, the transference of consciousness, and essentially the uh, uh, relocation of awareness outside of the physical body. So, I will talk about that. Um, but first, I want to talk about something that, that, that forms the, the basis of many of the exercises in initiation into hermetics, um, and specifically the transference of awareness. Um, that's the basic hermetic formula, and it goes like this. Um, Barden sets the stage uh, with the little different components of, for example, the vital energy. So one of the very first exercises is inhaling the vital energy through your pores. And you begin that by using your creative visualization. And that's important. It's the creative visualization. It's just not, not just visualizing something. It's creatively visualizing. You're adding your will into the, the mixture with your visualization. And you have certain highlights uh, like with the vital energy, it feels a certain way, looks a certain way, etc. You're using these in your visualization, but you're adding your will to that, that you are going to connect with the vital energy and begin actually breathing it through your pores. At the beginning, it's just your imagination, but it's your creative imagination with this focused goal. And that, that works the magic. That, what that does is it opens up your faculties of perception so that you can perceive the vital energy and thus consciously bring the vital energy in through your pores. That's all about your perception. The vital energy is always there and we're always um, interacting with it. You know, it's always filling our bodies and depleting from our bodies, etc. But this exercise, you're doing it intentionally and consciously. So that's where the creative visualization comes into play. It, it opens your ability to perceive the vital energy or the elements. Same thing. You're using your creative imagination with each of the elements and then, eventually, it goes beyond your imagination and you are suddenly feeling the actual elements. And then you don't have to imagine anything. It's just, well, okay, there's the fire element. Okay, there's the water element. Okay, there's the electric fluid, the magnetic fluid. Um, <clears throat> all these exercises use this basic formula apply the creative imagination to this set of parameters that you've established beforehand and you expand your your faculties of perception essentially to the point where you actually perceive the thing you're aiming for. Now the same applies to the transference of awareness because at first we're using our creative imagination. Um, we're imagining we are in the, the body of the thing and what it, it looks like around us, how it feels, etc. We're imagining that. But again, we're using our creative imagination. And that opens us up to the perceptions. Now, the transference of awareness. i to take you through a, a short exercise here. Um, consciousness is very motive. We can place it anywhere we want. We do it all the time. Um, the old saying of if you stub your toe, you know, that's where your awareness is, right there in your toe, because it hurts like hell. So the awareness is drawn to it because of the physical sensation. But we can, of our own accord, move our awareness around in our bodies. For example, I want you to do this. Imagine, just look at your hand. Hold your hand out in front of you. Now start to feel 
your hand, the different parts of your hand. Feel your thumb. Feel the sensations of your thumb. Feel your forefinger. Feel your middle finger. Feel your next finger. Feel your little finger. Feel the palm of your hand. Feel the back of your hand. So feel all the parts of your hand. You have just shifted your awareness into your hand. As simple as that. You moved your awareness, you focused your awareness in your hand. Now this is very easy to do because it's our own bodies. Um, but uh, take something and place it in your hand. Now it's separate from your body, it's close to your body, but it's separate from your body, it's a separate thing. Now here, we have to use our creative imagination. The parameters are, I am going to place my awareness inside this obsidian sphere, and I am going to see what it looks like, what my room looks like from that perspective. So I'm translo I'm relocating my awareness, really. Uh, this isn't... Uh, um, truly a transference of awareness. This is merely relocating my awareness to this space, this object in space. And I do that with my creative imagination. I build up the imagination of what does the room look like from this perspective. If I was looking from this perspective, what does the room look like? What does the hand underneath me look like? What does uh, the open air above me look like? Uh, what does this person sitting talking to me look like? Um, all that. So we use our creative imagination. You do that frequently enough, and it wouldn't take you too many times. You will then, at a certain point, not have to imagine it. You will just automatically sense what the room looks like from perspective of this sphere. Now... It's to take it deeper, the real transference of awareness, I relocate my awareness to this physical object, and then I connect with what this ball is experiencing. What are the energies that it's interacting with? And that's what this does mostly, is it interacts with different energies in the environment. And there's an abundance of different energies that it's interacting with. The energy from my hand, from my body, from the atmosphere, from the uh, uh, protector I have up there, from the uh, radiator that's over there, etc. are all interacting with this sphere. Now, it doesn't experience emotion, so I'm not getting any emotional feedback. But I am experiencing that it is, it is comfortable with these energies. So it is sort of a proto-emotion. Um, at any rate, that can be accomplished also with the creative imagination. But really, once you've learned to translocate, it's very easy to transfer your awareness, where you're connecting with how it is feeling. Um, it's much simpler, uh, well, it's simplest to start with the inanimate objects because they don't have emotions in the same sense. They don't have thoughts in the same sense that we do. So there's less for us to c connect with and misinterpret, um, give meaning to that isn't there. Um, which is the main barrier in the transference of awareness into, say, a plant or an insect or an animal or a person, etc. Um, a more animate, um, thinking, feeling uh, being. Um, <clears throat> transferring the awareness into an animal, say, my cat, Blue, um, at first, there is a translocation of awareness in which I picture myself, you know, in this exercise here, I'm picturing 
myself using my creative imagination to make that connection to how it feels, how it, how I perceive how the world looks from that perspective in space, basically. Then I connect a little deeper and I feel, I perceive how he feels in that place at this moment. How he feels, not how I think it would feel to be laying like that, but how he feels laying like that. That is the real key, the, the real signpost that you are achieving a true transference of awareness where you are perceiving what the animal, what the object, uh, what the person is perceiving themselves. And that starts on a physical level. Those are the first impressions you get. Um, you know, it is just a little uncomfortable here the way I'm laying, so I have to adjust. Um, you, you get those kind of impressions. Then come the emotions, and specifically the stronger emotions. Um, my cat is very satisfied because, you know, he feels me thinking about him, so he's kind of purring. Uh, he's happy, he's pleased, he's safe. Uh, so, uh, and then you connect with the thoughts and the mental body. And <clears throat> that's really, uh, in the instance of my cat, the most foreign, um, the least human. The sensations I can understand being in a body myself with all these nerve endings. Um, and the emotions, because our emotions are very similar since he lives with me, you know. Um, but our thoughts are very different in structure. Um, and it's impossible for me to really put into words. So it's, it's a process. It's a, um, a deepening of the connection. And that's the signpost. If you are perceiving what the the being uh, or object, the being, essentially is perceiving itself, then you've made the connection. So, <clears throat> the projection of awareness, as in mental wandering, it's very similar to what I was talking about with the obsidian sphere. It's an object outside of me. And uh, with this, it's very easy to move my awareness into it because it has form. You know, it is an object. But with the mental wandering and the astro mental wandering, there is no object outside of me to project my awareness into. So I am projecting just my awareness, sort of standing on its own, not inhabiting another object. Um, there is a process by which you build uh, an astral uh, body um, out of astral substance, basically, and then project your awareness into that astral body. But I don't like that. I don't like it. It's totally unnecessary. Um, because mental wandering, especially, is just with the awareness. So I put my awareness outside of my body and leave just enough of it in here to, to speak to you. But really, I'm standing off to my right. So, <clears throat> when we project our awareness for astral wandering, or mental wandering, or astro-mental wandering. It's, it's different technique here. Um, it begins, again, with the creative imagination. But uh, if, at, if you're at that stage of initiation into hermetics, it takes very little creativity to understand, comprehend, and perceive um, 
a, a, a mental projection of your own self, a complete autonomous mental projection where your mental body is not, well, it's not completely absent from your physical body necessarily. It uh, doesn't have to be for a mental wandering. Um, there is often still some awareness in the body. Uh, you know, <laughs> all the bodily functions continue. You might fart. You know, you might have a stomach gurgle. Um, so things carry on. But it doesn't capture your attention. Um, your focus of attention is strictly external to your physical body. Now, what takes practice here and take some work with the creative imagination is the accuracy of your perceptions outside of your body. Um, and it really has to do with the habits of the brain and how we think with our brain, okay? It's not so much the mind um, that's that's what you have to do is uh, disengage from the brain thinking and go just with your mental, your mind perceiving. Um, and it perceives the universe differently than your eyes do, your physical eyes. Um, <clears throat> what is most predominant in the mental vision is the meaning of things. The meaning of things shouts itself to your, your senses, okay? Um, not the significance, but the meaning of everything. Um, and it takes a while to get used to, so you're not just stumbling around, you know. Uh, and you're not making things up. The mind, the brain wants to make things up to fill in the blanks of perception. Um, so it will assume and uh, give you an image that is what you expect, not what is. Um, and that takes a while uh, and a lot of practice um, uh, to really break through that barrier. To where you're just perceiving uh, without interpretation at first. Um, uh, and Bard Barden, uh, his way of going about that is uh, to start in your room. Um, mental wander in your room and perceive different things. Where are their position at that moment and what they look like and then come back to yourself and then walk around your room and you follow in your mental footsteps looking to see if your perceptions were accurate. And, you know, if you do that enough, they will eventually become accurate. You'll have a, a crystal clear. I mean, you have to... <clears throat> you have to compensate for the differences in perception from what you see with your eyes and what you perceive with your mental eyes. Um, so, there is a difference, but it's not substantial. Um, the same things will be in the same places. They will just look a little different, necessarily. Um, <clears throat> now, the astromental wandering is a little more difficult to conquer, really, uh, at least in Barden's method. Um, yeah, I can't really say much about that other than do the exercises. And again, it involves some creative imagination and the verifying of perception. Um, wander, you know, after mental wandering in your room, then go back to yourself and then verify your perceptions, outside verify your perceptions, till it becomes an actual factual vision. Now the astral vision is a lot more like a uh, regular physical vision, um, because it contains both meaning and significance. 
So that's the same thing that physical vision uh, encompasses. But, so, but it's more than physical vision. It's much more alive, um, much more significant, more filled with meaning, etc. <coughs> so, I think I've said about as much about that as I can say. But pay attention to that basic hermetic formula. It's very powerful. The setting of the parameters of what you're trying to achieve and then using the creative imagination, that imposition of the will that you are going to perceive these things that you set out to perceive. It works every time. <laughs> it does. It's really amazing. So, that's it for this week. See you next time. Bye-bye.